Hey guys, this is Mike, the Detroit Borg, with a comparison of the Amazon Kindle Fire to the Barnes & Noble Nook tablet. And now in this video, we'll compare the hardware specs, design, user interface, and ecosystem to give you an idea of which device is best for you. Now looking at the specs, both devices use the same TI 1GHz dual-core OMAP processor. But the Kindle Fire has 512 megs of RAM, while the Nook tablet gives you 1 gig of RAM. Storage on the Fire is 8 gig with 6 gigs available to the user, and on the Nook we have 16 gigs of storage, but only 1 gig is available to the user. But unlike the Kindle, the Nook gives you the option to expand storage thanks to a micro SD card slot. Also similar but not identical are the 7 inch LCD screens on each device. Both have the same resolution of 600 by 1024 pixels with a DPI of 169. Both are IPS displays which means they can be viewed from a variety of angles without losing color fidelity and contrast. So this is very similar to the iPhone 4 or the iPad 2. Now what's different here is that the Nook tablet has a laminated screen, meaning that the LCD screen is laminated directly to the glass. So there is no distance between the glass and the LCD. So there is less refraction, which is the distortion of the LCD screen reflecting back on the glass. Now you do get some of that in the Kindle, but it's not a major issue, but certainly it contributes to a higher quality looking display on the Nook tablet. Now, although both devices have the same screen size, the Nook's chassis design is larger in all dimensions, both in length, width, and thickness. Now, despite the larger size, the Nook is 5 ounces lighter than the Kindle, which doesn't sound like much, but this really becomes noticeable when you're holding each device for a long period of time. The design of the chassis are very different, with the Kindle featuring a much more compact and simple square design with an edge-to-edge -edge glass screen, while the Nook has a tapered and rounded design with many more materials and textures. Both have soft textured finishes on the back which are pleasant to hold, but in the end I find the Amazon tablet more comfortable because of the thicker and more grippable edge. The Nook has a larger tapered bezel, which is comfortable to hold, but the plastic bezel has a Teflon-like texture to it, which I find too slippery. The lighter weight of the Nook certainly helps its case, however. Now looking at the physical buttons and connectors, you can see both have micro USB ports as well as a headphone jack. However, the similarities end there. The Kindle features only one small power button near the connector and no other physical buttons like a home button or volume controls. The Nook features both a power button, volume controls, and a physical home button in the shape of the N logo. The Kindle replaces all of its hardware buttons with virtual controls, which may not be popular since it means that adjusting the volume means waking up the device and tapping the settings bar to get to the volume slider. The home button is also omnipresent in the lower left corner, but this also means that in order to wake up the device, you must always search for the tiny power button at the bottom edge. The position of this button also means it's easy to accidentally press and almost never easy to find quickly. This is perhaps my least favorite design attribute of the Kindle Fire and I hope that future iterations will include a more visible sleep-wake button. Now in terms of speakers, the Nook has one rear firing speaker while the Amazon Kindle has two side firing speakers at the top edge. I think this gives the Amazon Kindle a louder and richer sound, especially if you're using it in a case. But neither speaker system is particularly loud and it's still best to use the headphones. Now looking at the user interface, both are noticeably similar. On the home screen, you'll find a cover flow-like tool to navigate through your existing library of apps, documents, videos, music, albums, etc. On the Amazon Kindle, you can organize these by pinning them down to your favorite's bookshelf. While on the Nook, you can drag them to three different home screens on which you can swipe through. On the top of the Kindle, you'll find notifications and a settings panel, while the Nook positions these same tools on the bottom of the display. The Kindle and Nook also have quick navigation menu bars on the home screen where you can quickly access your content or take you right to their stores. However, the Kindle does a better job keeping heavily used items visible on the home screen in one place, such as search and web, while the Nook requires you to press the home button to bring up options like search or web. Speaking of web browsing, this is where both devices really differ. Amazon features the Silk browser, which uses Amazon servers to do all the processing work, therefore speeding up the web browsing performance on lower power devices. In theory, this will make the Kindle browser faster, but in practice, I've actually found it to be slower than the Nook browser. The Amazon Kindle browser also includes tab browsing, while the Nook does not, and instead opens up new pages, which you have to navigate through thanks to a drop-down menu. The browsing experience is otherwise similar, pinch to zoom and scrolling are about the same, while neither device are particularly smooth at accomplishing either task. 
The Nook and Kindle are further separated by the content available to them. Barnes & Noble is primarily an e-book seller, while Amazon sells everything from books to music to movies. Now, the e-reading experience is very similar on both devices. You can easily buy books from their stores, and the e-books feature very similar reading tools, such as the ability to select font size, background, text spacing, and even search terms or highlight text and take notes. However, when it comes to other content, the similarities end. On the Kindle, launching the music or video feature will take you to your onboard content, or you can navigate to the store where you can purchase items individually, such as movies or TV episodes. Nook somewhat confuses their message here because although they say the Nook offers music and video, it only does this with the aid of apps. So launching the music services icon will bring up Pandora or the onboard music player. It's the same story with video. Instead of individual movies, you are taken to apps like Netflix or Hulu. And not to be overlooked is the fact that Amazon leverages its cloud services for storage, meaning you do not need to keep your entire library on your Kindle in order to have access to it. Of course, this means that you will need a Wi-Fi connection to access your content, but you have the option to download the content directly to onboard storage. The app environment is also significantly more extensive on the Kindle where you can find many popular Android and iOS apps which have been ported over to the Amazon store. While the Nook store is significantly smaller with an inadequate selection of very basic apps. So for example, there are many free weather apps available on the Kindle, but there is only one weather app in the Nook app store and it's $4.99. However, very popular apps like Netflix, Hulu, Pandora, and more are available on both platforms for free. The Nook does beat the Kindle when it comes to video playback, especially in Netflix or YouTube. Video quality is higher resolution and the Nook's higher quality display really makes this the best video player. Another advantage to the Nook camp is the fact that it supports EPUB, while Amazon only supports its proprietary ebook format. So this makes the Nook the best device for sideloading books using a DRM free format. Both devices also support most of the popular music formats such as MP3, AAC, which is iTunes content that's DRM free, AUG, Vorbis, and Wave. The Nook also adds support for MP4 and AMR, while the Amazon Kindle supports MIDI. In terms of video, both devices support Adobe Flash and MP4. You can also view photos on both devices in JPEG, GIF, PNG, and BMP. Overall, I have come away more impressed by the Kindle than the Nook thanks largely to the simplicity and consistency of the UI and the significantly more expansive Amazon ecosystem, which includes better selection of media content, apps, and cloud services, along with a modern web browser that includes tabbed browsing. And combine this with the fact that the Kindle is $50 cheaper than the Nook, then I think the Kindle is the best choice for most users. So that's going to do it for me, guys. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think. Which device do you prefer and why? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.